Exploring Cheddar, Cox's Cave Adventure. Cheddar is truly one of a kind. Its claim to fame lies in the breathtaking natural wonders of Britain's largest gorge. The Cheddar Yeo flows through Gough's Cave, boasting the title of Britain's biggest underground river, while the towering gorge cliffs stand tall as Britain's highest inland limestone cliffs. Experience the awe-inspiring beauty of Gough's Cave and the majestic Cheddar Gorge Cliffs in our captivating Goff's Cave Adventure video. Check out the link in the description below. This remarkable gorge has earned the prestigious status of being a site of special scientific interest. Its diverse landscape features calcareous grassland, cast limestone buttresses, and serves as a habitat for horseshoe bats and the rare cheddar pink. Peregrine falcons grace the cliff faces with their presence, while soe sheep and feral goats maintain the lush surroundings. Below the surface lies a vast underground network of caves and caverns, guiding water from the Mendip Plateau to the public show caves and the lower gorge. Nestled within this natural wonderland, lies the historic village of Cheddar, boasting a rich and ancient heritage. Once a significant Roman and Saxon centre, the village is home to the Kings of Wessex Academy, built upon the grounds of an Anglo-Saxon palace. Remnants of the 13th century chapel of St. Columbanus still stand as a testament to the village's storied past. Since as early as 1130 AD, the awe-inspiring beauty of the gorge has been celebrated as one of the Four Wonders of England. Cheddar's legacy of farming and cheesemaking dates back to 1170 AD, with cheese still being produced and matured in the caves to this day. Stroll through the village and you'll encounter historic landmarks such as the 15th century Market Cross, a scheduled ancient monument and the charming Grade II listed 17th century Hannah Moore Cottage. Over the centuries, water mills once ground corn and produced paper, while the Victorian era saw the rise of large-scale clothing and shirt-making industries. The dawn of popular tourism arrived with the opening of the Cheddar Valley Railway in 1869, offering townsfolk the chance for a leisurely day out. Known affectionately as the Strawberry Line, this railway transported the region's prized strawberries to all corners of the country until its closure in 1965. Today, Cheddar's strawberries still flourish on the sun-drenched slopes, enticing visitors with their sweet bounty. The former railway line now serves as a scenic footpath inviting explorers to tread the path of history while marvelling at Cheddar's timeless beauty. Cox's Cave owes its name to the industrious George Cox, a mill owner who stumbled upon its hidden wonders in 1837 while quarrying limestone for a new construction project. Recognising its potential, Cox wasted no time in transforming the cave into a mesmerising show cave, welcoming curious visitors the following year. 
For decades, Cox diligently managed the cave as a private venture until ownership transitioned to Thomas Thine, the fifth Marquess of Bath in the early 20th century. Interestingly, George Cox's familial ties to cave exploration run deep, as he was the uncle of Richard Goff, who unearthed the neighbouring Goff's cave in 1892. Inside Cox's cave is a network of seven enchanting grottos connected by charming low archways, each unveiling its own unique splendour. Let me read this text for you. 1884. Upon the death of George Cox, his family put the cave up for sale. However, the cave and the land didn't belong to the family. It was leased from Longleat Estate and not theirs to sell. The sale was rightly protested by John, the fourth Marquess of Bath, which led to a court case in Wells. On the 24th March, 1885, a new lease was granted to the Cox family. It was written into the lease that it would terminate in 99 years or upon the death of Princesses Victoria and Maud, daughters of the Prince of Wales. Following the earlier behaviour of the Cox family, this was a good idea. Although naming public figures on a lease was rare, if one of the princesses were to die, it would be public knowledge and clear that the lease would end. 1887. The Fairies' Grotto is opened to the public. 1893 to 1894. Edward Cox, George's son, the new proprietor, had opened a crack in the rocks to the surface, which he claimed was to make it safe. However, during the winter, around 200 tons of rock collapsed in the cave. No matter the cause, the Marquess of Bath requested that no further work should go ahead without his permission, as was stated in the lease. 1905. The Lady Chapel series of grottos were discovered and announced to the public. Just two years earlier, Cox's cave was overshadowed by the discovery of Cheddar Man in neighbouring Goff's Cave. 1913, electric lighting began to be installed. The caves were finally fully lit by 1929. This was much further behind than Goff's Cave, which had lighting as early as 1899. 1939, the Cox family's lease expired and the ownership returned to the Marquis of Bath, the owner of Longleat. 1955, in May, a new Gothic-style facade at the entrance to Cox's cave was completed, with Lord Henry Weymouth opening the doors for eager visitors. 1987. To mark the 150th anniversary of the discovery of Cox's cave, tunnels were dug to connect Cox's and Pavey's caves, known at the time as the Fantasy Grotto.
in Cox's cave and other underground marvels, the limestone formations dangling from above are known as stalactites, while those ascending from the ground are termed stalagmites. While some geologists suggest that these formations took millions of years to form, their growth is influenced by environmental factors. The speed at which stalactites and stalagmites develop depends on adequate ventilation and the presence of groundwater enriched with dissolved carbon dioxide. This CO2-rich water interacts with carbonate minerals in the cave's limestone, trickling down from the cave ceiling. As water evaporates due to proper airflow, these minerals gradually precipitate into the unique formations we admire. Surprisingly, instances exist where stalactites and stalagmites have formed beneath relatively modern monuments and buildings made of concrete or limestone erected less than two centuries ago. In Australia, a large stalactite formation was found within a deserted mine tunnel only 150 years old. Some stalagmites have formed so rapidly that they've encapsulated bats within them, preserving them in fossilised form. These swift formations were crucial for preserving the delicate remains, preventing decay long enough for fossilisation. These occurrences highlight the astonishing reality that sedimentary wonders can develop in mere decades or even less challenging the perception of their age.
stay tuned for our ascent of Jacob's Ladder. Plus, see the stunning views from the Lookout Tower. Make sure you subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell so you know when the video is posted.